I'm finally back with another vinyl video. Uh, I know it's been a while. Um, the last couple videos, um, we did some special things. We had our Let's Talk uh, Records episode, which was always a lot of fun. Uh, before that, uh, we had our um, uh, tribute to Olivia, uh, which was a lot of fun to do. But it's been a while since I've shared a video with actual pickups. So just thought I'd... Um, get y'all caught up on uh, the last pickups I've made the last uh, month or two. And uh, once again, hope everybody's been doing great, getting ready for Halloween, getting ready for fall. So let's jump right into it. Here we go. This past August, I can't believe we're in, uh, almost in November. I haven't shared this yet. So, but this past August, I was so excited because for a while, um, they've been talking about the uh, reissue of Missing Person Spring Session M, their 1982 album. Uh, so that was put out this year by Rubell and Remasters. And, uh, and they put it out on, on a couple of different color variants. Um, so they did a, um, uh, like a pink with a blue splatter and uh, they did a purple and red swirl. So um, I saw the opaque pink with the blue splatter. I'm not quite a big, I wasn't a big fan of it. So I said, let me go for the uh, red and purple splatter and it's gorgeous. So let me just kind of show you, excuse the glare. There's the back. Uh, so 40th anniversary limited edition of 500 on these so uh purple and red vinyl so includes uh words destination unknown walking in la walking in la <laughs> so just to give you the uh if you're not familiar with the album just to give you the quick track rundown noticeable one one of my favorite songs windows it ain't none of your business destination unknown uh again walking in la u.s drag tears here and now Words, love it. Bad Streets, Rock and Roll Suspension, and No Way Out. So fine job on that one. And put it in a nice lined sleeve with an insert. So there's the insert. Lyrics on the back. This one in a nice lined sleeve and So there's the red and purple swirl. It's kind of hard to catch on camera, but one side has more like a, a magenta hue to it with the swirl. And then the other side is, takes on like more of like a red when you see um, like purple streaks on it. So, but it's very beautiful, gorgeous, and I played it, it sounds great. So, but I uh, was really looking forward to this because the copy I had, I had an original copy of this that I bought many years ago and it, it had taken a beating. So uh, when they announced this one, I was definitely <laughs> uh, waiting to get that. So there we go. And I'm not sure they should have some left. If they don't have any left in this um, color variant, you know, maybe they've got some left in the other. But um, but it had been, as of uh, its release date, it had been selling very well, uh, to my knowledge. So um, there we go. Missing Persons, Spring Session M, 40th anniversary. So this past week saw for the first time on vinyl uh, the release of Kylie Minogue's Impossible Princess. Uh, several uh, retailers were carrying it in different color variants. Um, we had, uh, there was a release in like a, a marble purple that came out uh, that's available across most outlets. Uh, there was a picture disc and uh, there's also the opaque orange. Uh, that came out and that's the one I went with because I don't have a whole lot of orange vinyl 
in my collection. So I thought it might be something fun and different. And I uh, believe that the orange complements the uh, cover design really nice. So I went for that one. Had to wait forever to get it. Uh, Pre-ordered it as soon as I heard about it because you know with Kylie, her stuff gets snatched up. Whoop, just like that. So I didn't want to get left out in the cold. <laughs> so I pre-ordered it a long time ago and I finally got it. So, uh, but there we are, just to give you a close up of the cover there. Very nice. And definitely one of my favorite uh, covers of her. This is not necessarily my favorite Kylie album, but I definitely love the design and the uh, cover art. Always one of my favorites, it's so great. All right, and this is the 25th anniversary of Impossible Princess, limited edition. And there's the orange vinyl. Okay, and I am gonna open it because I do wanna show you there's a beautiful gatefold there, All right? That beautiful glossy cover. And there's the gatefold, very nice. And there's the back. Okay, and just a quick look at the track listing. There was Too Far, Cowboy Style, uh, Some Kind of Bliss, uh, Big Hit, Did It Again, Breathe, Say Hey, Drunk, I Don't Need Anyone, Jump, Limbo, Through the Years, and Dream. So it was great getting reacquainted with this album. Uh, I haven't played it in a long time, so it was nice getting a uh, uh, reacquainted with it. It's a, a good album after having another listen after all these years. So uh, I can definitely see myself spinning this one uh, uh, many times uh, in the future. So that is the 25th anniversary release of Kylie Minogue's Impossible Princess. Opaque orange vinyl. Nicely done. And there we are. So if you're a big Kylie fan or if you're just getting into Kylie, Pick it up. Uh, I believe it's still out there, available through a number of outlets. Um, as you know, some color variants might be uh, uh, quicker to sell out than the others. And I've learned by experience with Kylie's stuff, especially here in the States, honey, if you wait long, you wait wrong. So <laughs> don't wait too long to get it if you're thinking about it. So that's Kylie. All right, so uh, also uh, in the past couple months, I got an order, uh, actually the same uh, place where I ordered the Kylie, I ordered some other great stuff, uh, new and used. That's from uh, the German retailer, HHV. Uh, heard of them for years, never ordered from them, but when I was scouting around for a place to order the Kylie from, they had it for a terrific price. Um, I was And I was surprised because many times when I order from overseas, um, it's usually something that I absolutely cannot get here in the States and I usually have to wind up paying a little extra for it. This uh, retailer had the Kylie for the cheapest price that I found anywhere, whether domestic or overseas. And they had some great prices too on some uh, used vinyl as well. So um, definitely would go back to these guys. Uh, let's take a look at what they sent me. It took, it took them a while to send me this. I feel like I've been waiting on it for two months uh, because they wouldn't sell me, they wouldn't send me the rest of my stuff while the Kylie was still on pre-order. So finally got this uh, shipment from them with the Kylie. So let's see what other goodies they got, all right? So right away, um, they have some terrific uh, used vinyl, as I said, and um, specifically their Japanese used vinyl. Uh, is at a terrific price, uh, one of the best prices I've found. So let me share with you some of the Japanese titles that I got. So uh, I got Rick Springfield's Success Hasn't Spoiled Me Yet. Beautiful copy. Just great. Check out that Obi strip. Could you die? That is so nice. And one of my favorite Rick Springfield album covers as well. Very cool. And there's the back. Very cool. And this is one of those ones that I've never come across it on vinyl, at least not in decent shape, out in the wild here in the States. So to come across it in such nice condition and have it be a Japanese pressing, chef's kiss, baby. Woo. So I'm uh, just gonna open it up for you because it's got some 
there we go with that. And so there's the vinyl plated, sounds great. There we are. And it comes with comes with a poster. Hey now. <laughs> Very nice. Alright. And on the flip side, we've got uh, the liner notes and the lyrics there. Very cool. They look like they got these out my bedroom, pink and purple Converse. <laughs> Somebody been sneaking in my closet. <laughs> so, but um, you love Rick Springfield. You know these songs already, Calling All Girls. I get excited. What kind of fool am I? Uh, Christina, uh, one of my favorites, uh, perhaps my favorite track on this album, Don't Talk to Strangers, one of my favorite by Rick Springfield, and uh, many others. So uh, fantastic album, and uh, this is such a great album. And just reading through the liner notes, I'm, I'm reading things that I either didn't know before or maybe have forgotten, but I'm looking at some of the background vocals on here. We got uh, Richard Page from Mr. Mister uh, contributing some of his talent to the tracks. I said, man, that's awesome. So uh, all around, just a great Rick Springfield album. Nice to have some goodies inside and a nice um, quality Japanese pressing, uh, which cost next to nothing. I couldn't believe how inexpensive it was. So. Um, there we go, that's Rick Springfield. Success hasn't spoiled me yet. Uh, I have uh, the Three Degrees 1977 album, Standing Up For Love, isn't that gorgeous? Love those dresses, love the colorful tie-dye dresses that they have on, just beautiful. There we are. And there's the back. This is stunning. And this was an album I was of theirs that I was not familiar with. So I don't get to see too much of the Three Degrees here on vinyl here in the States, you know, which is a shame uh, because, you know, while they had a couple hits here, uh, their uh, reach, their um, fan base uh, outside the U.S., so I can say it in Europe, for example, uh, in Japan, is uh, always been huge. So I was glad to get a copy of this. And... Um, it's got uh, the title track, of course, Stand Up For Love. It's got their cover of What I Did For Love from the musical uh, Chorus Line, uh, which I thought was interesting um, because I love Broadway musicals. Uh, Just Leave Me Alone, Macaroni Man, G Baby I'm Sorry, People With Feeling, and Love We Grow. And uh, their take on Boss Skaggs' We're All Alone, which I was surprised to see that on here. So I played it. They did a terrific version of it very nice so um if you haven't heard it check it out their uh cover a uh, nice soulful cover beautifully sung uh cover boss gag so but um very cool and it does have an insert i'll show you that but that that obi strip very nice so yeah it does come with an insert nothing too fancy but you know it's got the uh, lyrics in japanese there. Okay. All right. So that is the Three Degrees Standing Up for Love. Again, a, one of their albums I had never seen, had not heard anything about, but uh, bought it out of curiosity because I do love their sound. And uh, hey, I was, I'm glad to add it to my collection because they are fabulous. There we go, that's the, that's the three degrees. <laughs> as, as Fred Stanford would say, that's the three degrees. <laughs> love it. I didn't know, ooh, you were gonna be my baby. Be my baby. Ooh. All right. So another one, and I think this is my last Japanese pressing that I bought, if I can recall. Yes, all right. So uh, this is the Taste of Honey. This is called Another Taste. And again, one I had never seen in the States in any form. So I uh, was glad to pick it up. And there's the back. This one arrived, I was 
kind of disappointed because this arrived a little bit mangled. You know how um, they'll, uh, people will put the records on the outside of the cover? So it arrived with the record on the outside of the cover uh, and it kind of mangled the OB strip. So I, I was mad about that. So it's the, it, it tore the OB strip and it was all folded and everything. So this one needs some care. So, um, but I'll open it up and show you. All right. And might as well slide this off because <laughs> I got to do some uh, repair on, the, on this OB, but... So there it is, and it gives you a better look at the uh, album cover. All right, love the uh, design on that one. All right, and there's the back. Okay. All right, so this one's got Do It Good, uh, The Rainbow's In, Dance, I Love You, Race, Let's Begin, Take the Boogie. Take the boogie or leave it, <laughs> your love. And of course, it's got boogie, oogie, oogie on it. So um, I played this one and uh, it does have more than a few surface scratches on it. So, you know, like I said, it, it definitely needs some, uh, I don't think it's anything that can't be repaired or, you know, fixed. So like I said, uh, it, it just needs some care, so I just have to doctor it a bit. But uh, because it was so rare, I went for it. I knew it wasn't going to be in great condition, but um, you know, I didn't pay a lot for it. But you know, sometimes if it's something you really want, you don't mind, you know, uh, looking after it. So you know, records uh, and any collecting records is always going to be an investment in some way or another. So while it's playable, uh, it does need some some definite deep cleaning and. Uh, this OB strip needs a little bit of help, so. <laughs> but I'm glad to have it and uh, at such a good price, so. Uh, and it's a great album. Uh, this group was fantastic. And uh, from what I hear, they're still going strong. So it's, uh, I'm glad to hear that. And there's many more albums of theirs that I want to collect. So, uh, you know, this is one of the first. So, but uh, there we go, A Taste of Honey, Another Taste. Um, another taste this is from 1979 so one more um new um release that i for uh forgot to share with you this is another reissue this actually came out in september uh, music on vinyl always does some fantastic artist reissues and this past september we got uh the bangles different light reissued and this is on pink and purple uh, marble vinyl. So I needed a cop. I need another copy of this, like you would not believe, because you know I bought this many years ago. And you know back in the day, you know when I was a kid, you know I wasn't, you know didn't know how to care for records. It was just throw it on the turntable, <laughs> throw it on the turntable, and play it to death. Well, it was definitely time for an upgrade. So uh, here we go, and what a nice one it is. So uh, this one says limited edition of 4,000 uh, on pink and purple marbled vinyl, multi-platinum album featuring the number one hit single, Walk Like an Egyptian, Manic Monday, of course we know composed by Prince, Walking Down Your Street, uh, If She Knew What She Wants, which is probably one of my favorite Bangle songs, and Following, and this is on 180 gram audiophile vinyl. So let me share it with you. Okay, nice heavy uh, cardboard stock glossy cover. All right, okay, there's the insert. All right, and there's that pink and purple marbled vinyl. Very nice, beautiful. Okay, and I have played it, of course. And it sounds great. 
Uh, looks great on the turntable, of course. So nice to finally have a, a decent copy of it after so many years. <laughs> that is Music on Vinyls, reissue of the Bangles, Different Light. Pick it up. So I was so excited to find this. I don't have enough of this artist's um, stuff on vinyl in my collection. Just a few things on some dance compilations. Um, I'm referring to Melba Moore. Check out that cover. I love that cover. It's so colorful and just adorable. She looks adorable on it. So uh, this is the self-titled album Melba Moore uh, from 78. And um, there's the back. Just adorable. Look at her, I love her. And again, I don't have a lot of her stuff. Got some things here and there, like This Is It, and you know, some other things um, on some dance compilations, but nothing on uh, vinyl. But I do a lot of listening to, um, like I've said before, a Studio 54 radio on Sirius, and they always play Melba Moore, and I'm just like, I need to find some of this woman on vinyl, and I can never find it. So um, again, from that same uh, retailer in Germany, they had a used copy of this. Uh, this has her um, version of the Bee Gees, You Stepped Into My Life, which I love. Uh, uh, there's another song that I've been loving by Melba Moore, which gets a lot of play. Um, on the serious station that is uh pick me up i'll dance Ooh, i love that song it's a, pick me up i'll dance dance to the music dance pick me up i'll dance dance to the music dance love that song i'm just like all right i need it i have to i have to find it on something <laughs> And uh, let's see, so we got um, those two tracks, There's No Other Like You, It's Hard Not To Like You, Together Forever, um, Happy, I Promise To Love You, and Wherever Did You Go, and um, recorded at Sigma Sound Studios. And this album was recorded by the late, um, this album was produced by the late McFadden and Whiteheads, who you know uh, from Ain't No Stopping Us Now. So as we know, they were producers and songwriters in addition to that one big uh, hit, uh, dance hit that they had. And this is a fine job, great album. So glad I was finally able to pick this up. So that is 1978, Melba Moore, great dance album. There you go. So picked up just a couple other goodies, got a couple uh, 12 inches. So huge fan of Rod Stewart, had never seen this 12 inch before, not here in the States to my knowledge. Um, so I got the 12 inch single for Another Heartache. And I couldn't even remember this song. And then I said, ah, oh, this is from his 1986 album, Every Beat of My Heart. So when I think of that album, I think of my main song from that album, which is Love Touch. So, <laughs> But uh, he did have another single on there, uh, which was this. And I believe this 12 inch is uh, from France. So, but um, this is the extended version of Another Heartache. It's got the edit version and it's got uh, the, You're In My Heart, the final acclaim. So um, there's the back. So this is nice to have. Again, this just cost a few bucks. It was nothing expensive. Something I could add to my Rod Stewart's uh, uh, vinyl collection. Always great to do. And as, as he's looking adorable as always. But uh, there we go. Another heartache. Rod Stewart. And I have been on the hunt for this for the last few years. Um... So it's, it's, and there's there's a little bit of a history with this 12 inch single. So if you've probably seen this, if, if you're into dance music or you're into um, soul R&B, you probably heard of this male vocalist who uh, popularity has kind of taken off in the last few years thanks to a video that went viral a few years ago. Um, let me just introduce the uh, let me just introduce the song first. So, but this is so this is an artist by the name of Garfield Fleming, and the track is "Don't Send Me Away." This is actually post disco. I believe the song originally came out in '81. 
So I had never heard of him before until this video went viral a few uh, years ago. So, so there was a video in, uh, I believe it was in, in France of a DJ who was spinning some records in a tent. You know how sometimes like, you know, people will uh, do like little pop-up shops, you know, in big, you know, public areas and parks and they'll, they'll sell records and things like that. You know, they'll have little tents set up. And so the guy's had selling some records, he's DJing and everything, and he's playing this song. And guess who stops by the tent and starts singing his own song? <laughs> Once it posted, it got tons and tons of views. And so that's how I came across it. So I was just like, wow, I'm a, this guy, and his voice is amazing. His voice sounds like, um, the closest I can think, he sounds just like David Ruffin. Think like David Ruffin meets Dennis Edwards meets Teddy Pendergrass. So he's like all three of them rolled into one. But this is such an amazing dance track. I mean, honey, you listen to this, you want to put your roller skates on <laughs> and head to the latest roller disco, man. You be This is such a great dance number. I can't stress it enough. But if you haven't seen the video, if you haven't heard the song, check it out. Um, supposedly, this track was so hard to come by since its original release in 81. It was um, hot as far as, um, you know, being very valuable on the uh, underground dance market. You know, uh, you would have to pay a lot for it. So, um, so, and so they reissued it uh, a couple of record store days ago uh, in the UK. And I could, still could never find a copy of it because, you know, it, ever, uh, either everybody was sold out or I could only find a single and it was like, you know, price sky high. So, but it just so happens this retailer had it. Uh, and I do believe this is the reissue. I'm pretty sure it's not the, the original. So, but um, this is uh, the 12 inch single where the original was so coveted and you couldn't find it. So finally I got my hands on the 12 inch single. I was so glad I said, I've been loving this song about what, three, or, three years now? <laughs> I haven't been able to find it anywhere. So, and I wasn't gonna pay out the nose for it on eBay or anything like that. So, but they had it for a great price. And uh, that's it. That is Garfield Fleming, Don't Send Me Away. Uh, originally issued in 1981. Uh, this is most likely the uh, RSD uh, reissue from the UK that came out a few years ago. I don't give a damn because I'm going <laughs> to reissue, original, whatever. I'm just glad to finally have it. So <laughs> I played it the other day, boogied all night, <laughs> boogied all night to almost broke, broke something. So <laughs> boogie all night to almost dislocated my hip. So <laughs> I had a good time. So that is it. All right, and last but not least, um, so HHV has some very cool accessories. Um, they're very like DJ um, cult. They're very like DJ culture centric um, at this uh, at this store. So they always have some cool accessories. Uh, they carry lots of um, uh, turntable slip mats. There's lots of um, you know they carry sleeves for your vinyl. Uh, cleaning accessories, 
So um, they had a lot of turntable slip mats, and so I saw one. I got uh, <laughs> so got me a Madonna turntable slip mat. Is my girl in her prime? That's probably one of my favorite photos of her. Early, early Madonna. Very cool to have, and that's going on my turntable uh almost immediately. <laughs> so that's cool to have. And um. They also have like a poster series uh, at this retailer. And I think they did like a women in music, um, like a mini poster series. And so I picked uh, picked up a Madonna Blonde Ambition uh, Women Up Front poster from them. Very cool, suitable for framing. Nice to have. So, so that is my HHV haul so great store from germany if you ever want to check them out um and i'll definitely be checking them out again because they've got some great stuff so uh, i'm waiting on my stuff from them <laughs> for quite a while so but uh you know that's what happens when you get do pre-order sometimes you know you don't get your stuff until you know it's actually you know been released so you know but it was worth the wait i'm glad i did so I got some excellent BCLT I want to share from my boy Larry, Disco Dude 79. He's all, like I said, great, like I always say, great minds think alike. And I'm so fortunate to have such a uh, good friend in him because every time he goes out, he's he's always telling me, oh, I saw this and I thought about you. Or, oh, I saw, I, you were talking about this in your last video and I saw this and it made me think about what you said. And I'm just like, child, what? <laughs> what you say? <laughs> Larry got me a, a few a great new finds and I can't wait to share them with you. So, so you might remember a few videos back, I mentioned that I was out crate digging and I found, uh, after many attempts, uh, the first album by Tamara and The Scene, you know, who had that great di uh, hit, Everybody Dance. So um, I had heard that they had a follow-up album. I had never seen it. Uh, I had hardly ever seen the, the first album, but uh, Larry had told me he had been out and about He's got, uh, he lives in an area with some great record stores and he found a copy of their second album, which he had told me, he said, yeah, you really gotta hear it if you've never heard this album. I said, I'll keep my eye out for it. He found a copy and look what he said. So he sent me Tamara and the Scene. This is their sophomore album, Blueberry Gossip. Isn't that cool? Very awesome. Had never, ever seen it before great album but I had heard good things about it so people who were in the know about this group uh, you know they always spoke highly of it and so um, I said man let me let me live in an area where I could just walk into a store and find something like this they never get rid of me so <laughs> so but um there's the bat yeah she was a beauty I wonder where she is now so but um just go through some of the songs. So there's the title track, Blueberry Gossip, Excite My Life, Betcha She Don't Want You, True Ecstasy, Captured By Your Spell, Tough Girl, Everyday People, I Saved My Love, Gone In Love, and Tears. So again, this is an, uh, their second album, which was uh, produced by Jesse Johnson. And I haven't had a chance to spin it yet, but I'm going to because I really want to, you know, uh, drink it in and, you know, uh, give it a proper listen. So I don't want to rush a needle drop. I really want to sit and give this a proper listen and um, take this in. And see, when was this? This came out, was it 88? I believe it was. The print is so small. I'm <laughs> Oh my God, I gotta pinch my contact lens and try to see, <laughs> see when this came out. I think this was 88. So, but this is fantastic. I'm so uh, glad that he sent this to me. So if you haven't seen it or heard it and you're a big fan of the um, Minneapolis sound, uh, check it out. That's Tamara and the Scenes follow-up album. Uh, this is Blueberry Gossip. Excellent. All right. And he sent me a couple more. This is an album that I love this artist, but I have never owned this album as I've never come across it, if, if you can believe it. So this is my girl, 
Grace Jones inside story. Check that out. Isn't that some cover? Man, go on girl. There's the back. So this has got, um, of course I'm not perfect, but I'm perfect for you. That was the hit off of here. Uh, Hollywood Liar, Chan Hitchhikes to Shanghai, Victor Should Have Been a Jazz Musician, Party Girl, uh, Crush, Barefoot in Beverly Hills, Scary But Fun, uh, what does that say? White Collar Crime, and of course, the title track, Inside Story. And this was uh, produced by Nile Rodgers and Grace herself. So uh, again, never seen this album out in the wild. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing it. Love Grace Jones. I love Nile Rodgers as a producer on anything. So I know I'm gonna uh, get a kick out of it. So uh, can't wait to play it. There's some Grace. So uh, my good friend Larry sent me one more fabulous piece of BCLT. He sent me the club classic, and that is Grace Jones Night Clubbing. And this is the original. Uh, you might remember if you've been following my channel for a while, a uh, long while back, uh, I did a video, I think it was called Top 10 Albums by uh, Badass Black Women Artists. And this was one of the ones that I featured. Now, the one that I featured was the reissue of this one, um, which came out on the 180 gram vinyl. I understand that one's kind of hard to come by now. So, but uh, this is the uh, original one. So e either one is difficult to come by and either one is gonna be a gem. So uh, one of my favorite covers, love this album. I mean, come on, this got Walking in the Rain. I love that song. Pull Up to the Bumper, uh, her cover of Bill Withers' Use Me. Uh, of course, the title track, Night Clubbing, Art Groupie. Uh, I've seen that face before, Libertango, Feel Up, Demolition Man, which was probably the first time I ever laid eyes on Grace. They used to show that video at off-peak hours on MTV when I was coming up. They weren't showing a whole lot of black female artists at that time, but uh, if you were up at the right time, you could catch Demolition Man um, on MTV at that time. And uh, I've done it again. So, but fantastic album. Great to have an original copy of this. You know, I never get tired of it. And as, and as you know, uh, Grace is an amazing performing, uh, performing artist. Uh, she's still going strong, thankfully. So, but uh, there we go. That is Grace Jones Nightclubbing, uh, another uh, wonderful piece of BCLT from my boy Larry Disco Dude 79. Always on the same wavelength, honey. I, you know I appreciate you. Thank you again. All right, so just a, more, a couple more things to share with y'all. So if you saw my um, tribute uh, video to Olivia Newton-John, you know, I shared uh, some of my memorabilia with you. And I uh, also talked about how I love to collect Olivia Newton-John songbooks. And they're very rare, very hard to come by now, uh, especially since her passing. So, but um, one songbook that caught my eye recently uh, on the auction block, which I knew I had to have because it had some songs that I had never seen domestically here in the States. And I said, I'm gonna do it. Cause, <laughs> Cause I said, I know I'm not gonna see this no place else. It was one of those, you know, <laughs> Well, it was one of those do or die, so I said, I gotta do it. So let me show you what I got. So I bought this beautiful Japanese uh, songbook. One of the things I mentioned is that you never see any selections from her album, Making a Good Thing Better, in print almost anywhere. So, um, so but again, just like the Carpenters and ABBA, uh, the Japanese market is a huge collector's market for Olivia and you see a lot of things over there that you just don't see here in the States and this book is one of them. So there was a series of at least three Olivia Newton-John books, uh, song books in the 70s and this is one of them. Um, only one I've ever seen um, as far as uh, over the years. Uh, and uh, the others are very hard to come by. This is the first time I've ever even seen this one. Uh, so, 
I knew I had to have it, and I'll tell you what's in it. Out of the series of three songs, because I believe this was the second one that came out. So, there we go. All right, so this has um, like almost like cherry picked selections from three of Olivia's albums. So the majority of the selections here are from Making a Good Thing Better. It doesn't have every song from that album, but it does have a good majority of them. So uh, we've got uh, the title track, Making a Good Thing Better. I Think I'll Say Goodbye, wonderful song. Ring of Fire, Cool It Down. Uh, it's got, uh, of course, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. Uh, so Easy To Begin and If Love Is Real fantastic um it's also got a track from her album don't stop believing it's got sam uh in this uh song book uh here uh it's got lots of tracks from uh, uh come on over including the title track wrap me in your arms green sleeves blue eyes crying in the rain pony ride don't throw it all away and uh, of course her cover of the long and winding road and there's three song selections from clearly love and including the title track He's My Rock and Lovers. So you get a lot packed into this songbook. And again, they did three of these to my knowledge. And each one, uh, it's the selection, it's it's um, the way they're chosen, it's kind of similar. They, they choose several selections from each album and kind of distribute them, uh, distribute them through uh, the three uh, volumes here. So, but I was so knocked out to see anything from the Making a, a Good Thing Better album. I said, I have to have it. <laughs> I was like, I said, uh-uh. I said, no, this one's not getting away. <laughs> so, because I don't know when or if I'll ever see it again. <laughs> so, there we go. And it's got some fantastic photos in it. I'll continue to show you. So, we saw that one there. All right. I love those two, very cool. This is so 76, 77 fashion era, and I, I love that fashion era. So, there's a few more in the center. There. So, and I think that's it for photos, but um, again, and there's a uh, page in the back where it kind of tells you what other artists they have in the series. Uh, shows the other two volumes of the other two Olivia songbooks. Um, looks like who else do they have songbooks on? I see some Eagles in here, the uh, Queen. I see the Stylistics, Bay City Rollers, and the Carpenters. Uh, so, and Paul McCartney. So. Um, and I understand that this publisher is still around. So uh, these guys must be like Hal Leonard Publishing when they've been around for years in Japan because uh, they're, they're still going strong. So, but uh, again, this is like a, a gem. <laughs> and I couldn't let it go. So glad to add this to my Olivia collection. How will I use it? Well, we'll have to see. <laughs> but there we go. That's Olivia Newton-John. Looks like it's in the second in that Japanese songbook series. Great to have it. All right. So last but not least, <laughs> I got to share this with y'all. So as you see, I collect a little bit of everything. I love vinyl, but I collect a little bit of everything. Songbooks, I mean, rock merch, love it. So when I heard that this was coming out a couple weeks ago on the day I heard it, I couldn't order this fast enough. I said, oh, <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about. Baby, let me share her with you. I think you'll recognize her. I do, let me just, let, let me just preface it by saying, I do collect rock dolls. I collect music dolls. <laughs> And I got a new one to add to my collection like no other. <laughs> Let me share it with y'all. Let me introduce to you, Tina. <laughs> oh my God. Woo. Ow. 
I was so, oh, I gotta watch it because the shoes come off real easy. <laughs> I was so excited when I heard that they were coming out with a Tina Turner doll. Um, and as you know, they're sold out everywhere now. But um, the day they announced it, I'm like, say what? <laughs> I couldn't jump on it fast enough. I said, honey, ramen noodles or no ramen noodles. I said, I'm about to order this baby because <laughs> I did not want to be left out. So, and it's a good thing I did because these dolls sold out within a day. So if you find them anywhere now, you're paying double, triple, or even more for them. So, but uh, this was uh, released in commemoration with the 40th anniversary of What's Love Got to Do With It, uh, the single. So as you can see, they're, uh, they replicated her costume in the video. They've got the leather skirt, the fishnets, they got the, uh, the heels, which are coming off. But, um, it's just amazing. they did a really good job with this and there's the uh jacket you know the uh denim jacket and she's got her little uh necklace on underneath so um so uh i kind of fluffed i kind of fluffed out her hair a bit because when it was in the package you know it was kind of like you know you know so but um and she comes with a little microphone so this was so awesome um <laughs> Because if there's if there's if, if there's an artist that's deserving of having their own doll, it's it's Tina Turner, <laughs> um, because she's just so amazing. And I know this was like for collectors, this was like a dream come true. And I think for generations, for like young girls, young women coming up, it's essential to have something like this. So. Um, like, I wish they would have had something like this when I was a little girl. You know, there, there wasn't anything like this. So, I but I've got it now. So, <laughs> this is awesome. I can't wait. And this is one of those dolls where I'm not going to keep her in the box because I, I totally want to play with this. Like, I want to <laughs> I want to put her in, um, like, different, like, suits, and, like, different jumpsuits and stuff. I can't wait to see what else I can dress her in. But, um... I've got, and I've got uh, some share dolls. Maybe I could have them do like a, <laughs> I could have them reunite and do another show together or something. So, but uh, <laughs> I, I know I'm like, I'm crazy, right? <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> so, but um, get a closer look. And I'll put the camera on her in a bit so you can get a closer look. It's kind of, kind of hard to do it justice uh, right now, but. I think they did a fantastic job uh, with Tina and I uh, was so happy to get this and I will probably keep her on display. Even the box, um, I, it took me a while, I was going to do an unboxing of this because, but just taking it out the box was so painstaking because I didn't want to ruin the box because the box is beautiful too. So here's, <laughs> there's the box and I love how it's got the Tina Turner logo there. Uh, came with a uh, uh, certificate of authenticity. Um, and there's the back. So, but um, just to kind of read to you what's on the back, it says, and this doll was created with Tina Turner's um, okay. So, um, so she did have a part in the uh, creation of this doll and the approval. So, but... Um, but it says physical strength in a woman. That's what I am, Tina Turner. So uh, that's just amazing. So, but um, said from a young girl singing in her rural church choir in Nutbush, Tennessee, to becoming the legendary icon hailed as the undisputed queen of rock and roll, Barbie celebrates the unprecedented music career and journey of Tina Turner. Just fantastic. So, um, this, um, I've got a lot of dolls that, you know, <laughs> I've been collecting dolls everywhere from Cher to the Spice Girls to Blondie to Joan Jett and uh, everyone in between. But, and this one is so special. I can't keep her in the box. I got, you know, T <laughs> Tina's meant to move. So, so uh, <laughs> I don't know. I might have to make her my new mascot. Y'all hear, you hear me, Tina? Yes, I hear y'all. <laughs> That's all I got for y'all today. <laughs> Don't have me committed yet. This is my fun. <laughs>
hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did sharing it with you. Guys, take care. See you later. And be good, all right? Bye. Sign to stay.